Welcome to Tough Bill's Garage. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you guys how to install a head gasket on your 2016 Ford Mustang EcoBoost. Don't worry, this is just the beginning. It's only the sweet and the sour. But if you guys would do me a favor and smash that like button, always subscribe to the channel because things are about to get beautiful. First thing that we got to do is disconnect the battery. Anytime you're messing with sensors, fuel, or anything in that sort, you definitely want to make sure you disconnect the battery. Any electronic shock could cause harm. So let's go ahead and open up the little case here. You would have two push pins here and one on this side as well. You want to take those push pins out and open the door. Then as you get the door open, you'll notice you have a negative and positive. We're going to go ahead and take off the negative which doesn't look like I actually tightened it, but it's okay, because we're taking it off anyway. And we're gonna take it off. Do not touch this to the positive, Do not touch it to any other grounds, anything like that. What I like to do, though, is I will take the cover, put the cover back, let the negative rest. Before we get started with removing the cylinder head, we gotta take off the skid plate. And why? We gotta drain the fluids. So what you're gonna need is a fork and a seven millimeter. You can either be on a gun or a ratchet, whatever you prefer. There are several bolts and several pins that you gotta remove. We're gonna take out the ones in the front of the skid plate. And then you have two on the bottom of the skid plate. Then you have five on the side of the skid plate. Go ahead and start on screwing every single bolt you see that is on the bottom of your side of your skid plate and don't forget to fork out the forkers. A good tech tip is always have a tube or something that you can use to put on the side of the pet cock because the minute you open that pet cock it's going to pour down like rain and you want to prevent that from happening because it will spill all over your garage floor and it will be really really sticky and messy especially in 120 degree weather. So what we did is we created a tube here, which is gonna drain into this tub once we open up the pet cock. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the pet cock, which is located right on the side, right there. So there's your pet cock, and there's the nozzle sticking right out of the pet cock right there. And there it goes. You're just preventing it from spraying out just like any other sprayer. Always have this open too, this is the breather. If you don't have that open, you're definitely screwing yourself. Make sure it's open. It's gonna splash a little bit, but it's not gonna be dramatic. Okay, as we're waiting for the coolant to start draining, we're gonna go ahead and show you the bolt that you need to take out ordinary to drain your oil. 15 millimeter socket is desperately needed, a ratchet, and make sure you have it pointed in the right direction. Here's the bolt you need to pull. Now you're gonna go ahead and unloosen it. You might want to position that pan long ways. And there we go. We'll come back when this is done. We're moving towards the fuel pressure. We got to release it. It's always a good idea. So what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to take off this tab right here. There's a push button on this side. And you're going to want to do is pull it in, pull it out. Just as simple. Now, if you haven't replaced this sensor, it would be a good time to do that because this is what makes Eco Boom go boom. So make sure you replace that. If you don't know about that, I have a video referring to that, but the, today's video is not revolving that. You're going to go ahead and take yourself a monkey wrench, get it on there, lefty loosey, tidy righty. You should get their napkins all ready and going. You want to put it underneath the sensor. Obviously, remember, this, is, this does spill fuel out. I'm gonna go ahead and start removing the sensor. Before we take off the intake runners, we're gonna need a seven millimeter and we're gonna need to take off the intake by itself. Not the runners, your actual intake, where your filter goes. So let's go ahead and show you how to take that off. For starters, we have a connector here that we have to take off on the side. You can go ahead and pull that off. Then you have a seven mil clamp directly from Ford. And go ahead and take that off. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna open one, open two, pull her back, pull it off. 
There's your first cap right there. Now for most of you, you're gonna have a 12 millimeter bolt here or a 10 millimeter bolt here. What you're gonna go ahead and do is you're gonna take off the box. You're gonna lift the box out. You're gonna take your other half, put your other half back on so that way the sensor stays clean because if that sensor gets dirty, you're gonna have to clean. If you have aftermarket polar intake pipes, it's gonna require an eight millimeter or their standard 10 millimeter depending on which hose clamps you have on them. That's all you need to do is just take it off and pull it off just like that. And just get that out of the way because we're gonna be taking off the intake runners. You have, or if you have, a aftermarket blow off valve, you're gonna have this adapter, especially if you have the dual port shorted blow off valve, it's gonna come with this. What you're gonna do, there's gonna be a pin that sticks in here that holds her down in place. You're gonna take a little screwdriver or whatever you need, pull that pin out and go ahead and push up on that. Make sure that you don't damage the rings that are in here. These are silicone rings. If you damage those, it's gonna leak. I'm gonna start taking off the purge solenoid and the purge solenoid right here on the top has a connector that you gotta push in and pull out. 10 millimeter bolt that sits right here and holds her down. So we're gonna go ahead and take our 10 mil, stick the 10 mil on it, pull in the right direction. Most of everybody has problems always taking these clips off here and they're really, really easy. You just push them down and pull out. Just like that, push them in and they, it will pull itself out. And once it pulls itself out, you're gonna turn the solenoid so you can get more of it out and pull it off. Now we have two more harnesses that are connected to your throttle body and one's connected to your mass air flow sensor. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go and press the button that is right here on the top. This one has a red tab. Pull that red tab up, push down in the center, and that harness comes right off. There's another hose that's in the connected to the back of your intake runner. You're gonna wanna go ahead and take that off. That's connected to your boost. What you're gonna do, there's two black tabs. On the top, you're gonna push it in and pull it off. We're gonna start taking this out. One bolt down here, right behind the pulley very hard to see and there's one over here we have one that's in the back of here now we're on the last one which is right here now your intake winners there's two cords that is attached to the back side of them you're gonna need a fork and those go to your knock sensors so if you pull back not a lot because you'll rip those and you will cry trust me i've seen it i've seen it before so once you start getting it off a little bit i have a oil catch can for mine you got to really pull those tabs inward because it's forward we are finally at the bottom of this you're not going to be able to move it as far as i am and the reason is because these cords are actually wrapped around your heater hose you're going to take this i'm going to get underneath it takes time to get them out so don't be rough with them because if you break those those are hard to find you have to buy a whole new harness just to get those again you do the same to this one now that we got those out we're gonna go ahead and pull the intake runners out always replace these gaskets always don't say oh they look good i'm just gonna throw them. no always replace gaskets leave your throttle body on for now unless you have a new one coming or a different one coming after you take out your intake runners, we're just doing this for a safety precaution. I would suggest using tape. I'm going to use towels for this, so I'm going to shove them in every single port. So that way dust or dirt or debris doesn't end up in that, even though we're going to be taking the head off. The reason why we're doing that, so that dust, dirt, or debris won't get in it, the block doesn't get dirty underneath it. You don't need to do this part, but I'm going to do it because of the fact that you want as much room as you can get. These cylinder heads are not light. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna take off the hose clamps. And these are locking hose clamps too, but if you have the right tool. But I just take them, pinch them. Twist them off, and your hose will come off. And you're gonna do the same exact to the other side. The more 
stainer they are, be careful with them because they are very fragile. You do have one more hose and that is on the bottom of it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this long old extension here, put them back into the fan because the fan's not going anywhere. It'd be a good place to keep them. That way you don't lose them. Now, as you can tell, you still have coolant in here. Now, what do we say about coolant, folks? Is you're gonna make a mess. Take it off. Drain it all to one side so you don't lose any of it. And as you can tell, mine's pretty dirty. It would be a good time to clean these things. If you don't know how to clean them, well, there's plenty of videos out there that will show you how to take this, turn it into this, and turn it back to white. That's it for this.